Why do we kiss? Who do we kiss? When do we kiss? And what makes a kiss particularly delicious or spectacularly awful? That's a lot of questions, and I'm going to try to answer them today, at least some of them. Scientists are still arguing about when humans first began kissing, and it looks like maybe the Egyptians have the win at 2,500 years ago. So that means, as a species, we've been kissing for about mm, 4,500 years. Now, I'm Italian, so I was rooting for us. After all, we are a romantic bunch. There is an ancient Roman custom that the last kiss would capture the soul of a dying person and keep it alive on the lips of their lover forever. Sounds like a great way to get an infection, too. One of the fairy tales that some of us know is the Frog Prince. Naturally, there's a spoiled princess, and she makes friends with a frog. The frog, though, isn't any ordinary frog. He's a prince that has had a spell cast upon him. And in order to release his inner prince, she has to kiss him. Of course she does. There's a lot to unpack in that story, but let's focus on something very important. Please don't go kissing a frog, or a toad for that matter. Now, I always love a good mystery, and the origin of the frog prince is said to have gone back to Roman times. Great, that's something we Italians can be known for, kissing frogs. Speaking of germs and infection, and getting sick from kissing, why even kiss at all? Some think kissing came about from parents sharing their food directly with their offspring. Now, this can make some sense because it can be helpful for kids to have their parents pre-chew the food, especially if it's something that they can't quite manage yet on their own. And it also has the added benefit of teaching them what to eat. Birds and wolves take this to the extreme by regurgitating the food directly into the mouth of their kids. That would be like a romantic partner wanting to share food, candy, and gum by passing it directly from their mouth to yours. Yeah, some of you do this. I know you do. You try. Aside from food sharing, kissing can be a, a ritualized greeting to say hello or goodbye. And in humans, this is often done by a kiss on the cheek. Funny how prairie dogs also do this, except they go full on mouth to mouth. Despite my European upbringing, I've always been a little bit wary about kissing strangers, even if it's just a light peck on the cheek. And then there's always that uncomfortable moment when you don't know how many times are we doing it, which side do we start on, and you can also end up accidentally just kissing on the lips. If you refuse, you could risk offending your new acquaintance. Clearly, this is not a problem for other species. This prairie dog was left thirsty and completely rejected. But let's get to what we've all been waiting for, romantic kissing. It's delicious, isn't it? if it's done right. We'll get to how it can be done wrong in just a minute, but let's take a moment to savor that momentous first kiss. Are you reading the signals correctly? How do you know when to try? Are you too eager? The tension, the anxiety, the anticipation. It can rock your world or shatter your dreams. It's positively nerve wracking. But why all the drama? There's a good reason for it. Research suggests that we make a lot of decisions based on that first kiss. There's all the biological stuff for sure, including hormones, health, and genetics. But a bad first kiss can mark the end of a budding romance. It's like a screaming billboard that says, wait, you're not compatible. This guy is obviously failing. And my guess is he's probably not a very good kisser. To be fair though, Cobb don't kiss. Now, if it's too aggressive or there's too many teeth involved, uh, there's a chance that you can frighten off your potential mate. But that's not all. A sloppy, wet, drooly kiss or food hanging out in your mouth can certainly curb anybody's desire. And too much or not enough tongue could leave you searching for more or desperate to get away. But there's some good news. Science tells us that kissing can burn calories and release endorphins. Those are those happy, happy hormones. What science can't do is teach you how to kiss or tell you if you're good at it. But other people can. You can get better at kissing by mirroring your partner, you know, taking your cues from them, following the signals. Unless, of course, they suck at it too. Then you're both out of luck. As they say, practice makes perfect, so pucker up. 